Now, I really want you to think about this, man. I want you to think about the magnitude going the next level inside of his life. Because at the end of the day, fellas, the biggest thing that a man needs inside of his life, no, it, you know, you, you would think it would be state retention, okay? But the main thing a man needs is this. Uh-oh. Hey. Uh-oh. Fellas, it's been a long time. We are back. More of the story is this. When God is working through your life and God is changing your perspective, this is where you have to follow the will of God, right? And I'm going to be very honest with you, man. This video is going to mean a lot because there's a lot of men of God on here. And this subject is going to be towards the men of God, discussing cedar, cedar tension and biblical masculinity. There's going to be two ways that you're going to see this. So stay tuned by the end of the video so you know what to look for in this, brother. Number one, fellas, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the principalities and the rule of the evil one. Seed retention is one of the main things that a man needs and the biggest tools going out inside of his life because the only sin that you commit towards your own body is sexual morality. So with that being said, going out inside of this world, I'm going to challenge you, okay? I challenge you to work heartily as unto the Lord and not for men. Colossians 2.23 in the Bible says, Whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord and not for men. Colossians 3.23 We are not working hard for man. We are working hard for God. So the world standpoint of semen retention, a lot of people, they go towards, uh, towards working hard for men. Like They get the attraction and they go towards working heartily as unto the man. And what that does is leaves a man back to sin, sinful nature. We are called to wait until marriage. Now we all have our past. We know exactly what happened in the past, but I tell you what, when you're new in Christ, he's gonna give you a new heart. He's gonna tell you, brother, you're on to state your attention. You didn't got the glow and everything. But guess what? Now you use this to do the will of God instead of doing it for the worldly action. Now, brother, when you do the will of God, it's such a beautiful thing. The reason why is because your will will never get you satisfied. Regardless if you want to, you know, do this, you know, regardless if you want to do this, right? And let's say that the flesh wants that. It's the flesh talking. But when you live by the spirit and you live for God's will instead of your will, you know, you start to realize that that will is not really the will because you have no enjoyment of that. When you do the will of God, you have full enjoyment and full peace doing it, right? So I challenge you on your cedar and journey, brother. Grind hardly as unto the Lord. Because I guarantee you, when you have your mind set on uh, things of God instead of the world, you're not going to really think more about indulging inside of a sin, but you're going to start thinking about what does God want for my life? And then you'll create life inside of you. Because we want to have life. Every man wants to experience peace. Meditation will not get you peace. All of these unclean things, you know, astral projection, and even the law of attraction, won't give you pure peace. But the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and everything should be added on to you. Fellas, as men, okay, we seek for battle mode. Battle mode. We want to go to battle, okay? That's why, you know, boxing, fighting, getting into martial arts, whatever the case may be, you know, being able to move your body fully. That way, you can go out and feel in battle mode, you know? If you ever notice a wife, some people, they may have a grudge inside of them, okay? It's not because of a thing, because they're holding things back. As men, we gotta fight, right? And the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the principalities and the rules of the evil one. So going out in this world, when we're on our SR journey as men of God, we are called to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what a real man does. A real man goes and sacrifices himself, willing to get persecuted, right? Risking his life, risking um, just, you know, his being for Christ. You know, the question is, like, are, you willing, are you willing to die for Christ? You know, think about it. Your SR journey, we got to go all the way back to natural frame. A natural frame is not the worldly standpoint of getting to the best version of yourself, but it's getting to the best version of yourself and submitting to God fully, right? Because seek first the kingdom of God, everything should be added on to you. So God knows what you want. Self-development, you can't hide from that, brother. Every man must go the next level and be the best version of himself, right? Because I tell you what's one thing, man. When you are a Christian man on here, faith without work is dead. Self-development it, it can either go up here or it can go, uh, go down here. You can't stay stagnated. It's only uh, two in betweens. And you're going to go all the way up here because you set your standards on the thing of, things of God instead of the things of the world. But a man that's on a self-development journey that does not have God, 
okay? He thinks he's going up here, but it's only gonna stay stagnated. It can only go so far, then he can go back down there, all right? He goes back down there. You know why? Because pride comes right before the fall. You want God, okay, to exalt you. The Bible says when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. In your SR journey, when you humble yourself unto God, God will give you platforms, tools to go the next level. And I guarantee you, it's going to be way further than what you than what you personally had with your own personal self, your self-development journey. All right? So at the end of the day, fellas, when we're out there as men of God, we use our SR journey for Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he sacrificed his life for us. And we are here spreading the word of God. We are here evangelizing. We are here being a tool of being a vessel for other kids and for other people. Right? Because at the end of the day, fellas, you want to be able to go to Judgment Day and hear, Job well done, my good and faithful servant. And so with that being said, I challenge you, brother, to really set your things on the Spirit and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because I guarantee you, man, your life will become a lot better. And the last thing I'm going to say is the wages of sin is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You know, a man that does sinful things is only going to hurt his spirit right the bible is going to give you life it's going to make you successful inside of his life okay and i'm not talking about just a worldly success there's a lot of bible verses regarding money i'm talking on a spiritual on a mental uh every every level of what you can expect even inside of your marriage or relationship you will actually succeed inside of his life if you follow the word of god right that's why jesus christ jesus christ came down here died for our sins that way we may have eternal life something that you know we're not really deserving of and the fact that we have the word of god Okay, to not only you know get closer to Christ and something that we can also live by is one of the most beautiful things a man can do. Now you transmit your energy to God, your self-development, and I guarantee you, brother, you will go the next level and you will be a real man of God on here if you were to grind hard for God. And the thing about it is, is this. A man that's on state attention and does not have God only goes back to a sinful nature, right? The reason why I tell you this is because you cannot depend on your own understanding. The Bible says that people will try to be wise in their own eyes, but at the end, it leads to destruction. Fellas, moving forward, I challenge you. When you do your SR journey for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the beautiful thing is this. Your intentions are going to be, you know what, dude? I'm not just going to do this for to go back to sinful natures, going to parties and all of this stuff. But I want to do this for God because I guarantee you, brother, God wants to bless you. The Bible says a plenty for you to prosper if you're not to be harmed. When you go and offer for God, your life is going to go like this. But if you only depend on SR and self-development, your life will go like this. Like this, like that, right? So you want to go like this inside of his life. And I tell you what, when you do not indulge inside of sin, you have more life inside of you, right? So having Christ inside of your life is the biggest thing a man can do. And definitely, I would highly suggest every man to get saved on here if you're not fully saved. You know, submitting to God. You know, Lord God, I repent of all my sins. And I ask you to fully come inside of my life. I deny myself unto you, Lord God. I repent for everything, every single thing, Lord God. I want you to save me, Lord God. Save me from this. Save me from this world. And I guarantee you, he's going to come inside of your heart. And the beautiful thing is, is this, is that you now have the key to life. And when you have the key to life, you cannot go out and win. And guess what? Seek first the kingdom of God and everything should be added unto you. Every single thing of what you desire. God wants you to be fit. God wants you to have a new mentality, right? So training is definitely important, okay? But you have, you have to set your mind on godly things instead of the worldly things. And I guarantee you, when you have your mind on the godly things, you will have eternal life and you will have life inside of this world. And I guarantee you, check back, check back. I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't even want to say maybe a day from now. When you actually submit to, to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you will have something special inside of you that you just can't imagine. You, you, you don't even want to go back to that fleshly, sinful nature, okay? So set your minds on things of, things of God. And fellas, if you're a man of God on here, be a vessel. Go out and, and, and evangelize. Only, you know, uh, if God is telling you to do so. But we're called to evangelize. We're called to go out and spread the word of God, right? I want you to be the change inside of this word. I don't want you to just use your SR journey for yourself, but use it, okay, to go out and help other people because they need the word. They need to hear what, what, they need to, you know, see what it's like to be a man of God. Woman, women need to see what it's like to be with a man of God. Uh, Proverbs 31, woman, you know, we need more men of God on here who's going to stand up in the faith, act like men, be strong, let everything that we do, we do be done in love. So with that being said, brother, okay, if you're a man struggling with PMO, you want to finally get out of this cage, right? We've talked to so many men, okay, that were in this bondage and now they're outside of this bondage. Be sure to DM me on IG, the word alpha, at em underscore souls. That way we can get you help. Also, just go down below, book a one-on-one consultation to see if you're a good fit for our program. But until then, 
I think you know what brother Elijah got to do. Come on now, brother. <laughs> now nah, we're just gonna end the video.